I'm not even moving. Not even moving. Oh! You guys see that? This right here probably wouldn't be considered to be uh, safe ice. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna go over all the safety guidelines that you need to go ice fishing. I am addicted to ice fishing, I love it, but uh, to be honest, it's probably the most dangerous type of fishing you could ever do. So if you look over here, so I typed in how many inches for safe ice fishing, and we go to the Minnesota DNR, it says four inches to safely ice fish. Less than four inches, you're gonna wanna stay off. But if we go to another website right here, Engineering Toolbox, so I don't know the, I don't know how credible this website is, but they have much different information. According to them, if you look on this chart right here, it says between one and three quarters to two inches, one person cross country skiing. Two inches, one person on foot or skates. Four inches, you can actually drive a snowmobile or small ATV. So I don't know, we got, we got two different sources right here saying uh, two conflicting things. So I guess uh, the only thing we can do, if we don't know which one's right, we're gonna have to uh, test it out ourselves. And I will be going on here, hopefully being safe, but in case I'm not safe, I've got two people here to help me out. We got my dad and the real person who will save me if I happen to fall in. We have my grandma. Wow, oh, hi. Are you gonna are you gonna save me if I fall in, grandma? Yes, definitely. Definitely. I'm the best one. How old are you, mom? 85 in April. Oh excellent. Well that'd be perfect. So but for real guys. But Mike, I gotta warn you about one yeah. thing. Mom, when's your when's your birthday? April Fool's Day. April first, right? Yeah. Michael? Although she said she might save you, once you're going down, she might say, April Fools! <laughs> <laughs> That's, cute. That's a good one. <laughs> if you're ever going to go on the ice, the one thing you absolutely need is a pair of ice picks. You've seen me use them. I'll be using them again today. And basically what this will allow you to do is it will allow you to climb out of the ice should you fall in. If you look right here, it's a sharp metal spike which you can use to dig into the ice, get some traction, and pull yourself out. Um, if you have enough body strength to do so. So I'm pretty fit. I'm a young guy, so I should be able to, but we're gonna we're gonna test out this ice over here and we're gonna see uh, how thick it really is. So first off guys, let's see how thick this ice is. What's your prediction, Dad? There's water all over, it's been melting. What do you uh, think? I'm gonna say uh, three and a half. Two and a quarter inches. Okay. Alright, we're in. So what was your estimate? Two and a quarter. Two and a quarter? All right, let's take a look, guys. So, I'm on the ice. It's making no noise. No noise whatsoever. I'm gonna go ahead and measure it real quick. And right here, we've got that much ice. What does that look like to you, Dad? Probably less than two and a quarter. That's about two inches of ice. Really? So right here, we're on two inches of ice. Right here. We're on two inches of ice. It's clearly not safe, but it's making no noise whatsoever. Right? I mean, I'm walking on this ice. No noise. No noise, right, guys? Look at this, I'm on two inches, completely fine. So the key for determining if ice is safe at a less than four inch uh, you know, thickness is what it looks like. Clear black ice is the best ice to go on. If the ice is really cracked or if it has that cloudiness, it's not gonna be as safe. So we have clear black ice right here and two inches, as you can see, is perfectly fine. It's not gonna break. What do you think, Grandma? I think that it will break. You think it'll break? Uh -huh. All right, let's test it. So I'm gonna jump on the ice. You got a shot? No, don't yeah. do that. You know what's gonna happen, Grandma? Because they'll break. You think it'll break? All right, let's see. I'm on two inches of ice. Let's see if it breaks. Oh, it's making noise. It's making noise. It's going to break. It's not breaking. Look at that, guys. Two inches. Whoa. Oh, Whoa. Wow. <laughs> don't do it in All right, you happen. almost lost your teeth. Oh, we're good. See that, guys? Two inches of ice did not break. So we're gonna do another experiment now. So now we're gonna do another test. We're gonna see how thin the ice gets until it breaks. So right here, looks like someone's ice fishing. Let's take a look. We're on it, it's making noise. We're on it right here. Let's go ahead and uh, drill a hole and see how thick this ice is. This is exposed to the sun, so it should be a little thinner. All right, that is extremely thin ice right here. This ice right here, look at that. That is about an inch and a half, right dad? About an inch, inch and, and a half. half. Yeah. I'm standing on an inch and a half of ice. It's not breaking. So once again guys, don't do what I'm doing in this video. This is for demonstration, scientific purposes only. I don't want you guys to come out here and fall in, but if I do fall in, I have the ice picks to get out. So now what we're gonna do, is we're gonna venture over there and see how far I can get. So we're getting close to the fountain now, it's making noise. We're gonna drill a hole right here. 
Oh, okay, that is extremely thin. Look at that, guys. That right here, that is still about one and a half inches. Still about one and a half inches. So we're gonna go a little farther now. So it's making noise. Whoa, okay. It's, Whoa. It's sunk right there. So right yeah. there. So this is the breaking point, guys. Here's the breaking point right here. We're gonna see what it is. All right. Whoa. Right here. Look at that. That is how thick the ice is right there. That thickness. So that right here, that's gonna be about, that's still about an inch and a half, but what's happening is right near that fountain is getting thinner and thinner. I'm gonna do a little test, guys. We're gonna see if I can get on one inch of ice if I disperse my weight. As you guys know, if you fall into the ice and get out, as soon as you, what you wanna do, if you hear the ice, if you hear the ice cracking, if it's about to break, get, it, get on your belly, disperse your weight. So what I'm gonna do right now, I'm gonna get on my belly, and we're gonna see how far I can go out here. We are now on the one inch of ice territory. It's definitely making noise over here. Woo! Okay, it's breaking. It's breaking. That right there, that's about to break. Woo! So, that water is very, very cold. And do you know how long it takes to, until you get hyperthermia if you fall into freezing cold water? 20 minutes. That's a good guess. How long do you think, Grandma, until you get hyperthermia if you fall into freezing cold water? Five. Five minutes? So I don't know the exact number, but according to an expert fisherman, Uncut Angling, he claimed you can be in freezing cold water for 15 minutes until hyperthermia sets in. Really? So here's what we're gonna do, guys. We're gonna go, go in the water, and I'm gonna attempt to get out without ice picks. And if I can't get out without ice picks, we're gonna use these bad boys and uh, no. get out. We're gonna fall in, Grandma. This is for, we're gonna show people what to do to get out. You shouldn't tell it, you should get her natural reaction. <laughs> no, he's not gonna fall in. <laughs> I'm walking out. It's very, very Don't worry. Thin. I'm walking out onto the ice. All right, yeah. look at that. Hear that cracking, guys? This is about to break. I'm not even moving. Not even moving. Oh! Oh! So I fall in. Ice picked around. What you want to do? is you wanna play in your body, get sideways, and try to push yourself out, if you can. So you see this ice is breaking. You try to get... Not even use the ice pick, no ice pick. Look at that. See, you can get out of the ice with no ice picks. Now let me show you how easy it is with the ice picks. Want to go back into that hole? No! Ugh. This water is freezing cold. So, I'm gonna take my ice pick and I'm gonna use it. I'll be honest, Dad, if I was in this water for five minutes, I'd be freezing. Really? It's draining your energy. It'll be really hard to get out if I was in here for more than a couple minutes. So you want to use your ice picks, climb out, climb out far out of the ice, Get to safety, and then you stand up. Mm. Woo. So, how I'm feeling right now, guys, my hands are numb, my muscles are cramping up, because that water is literally freezing cold. Woo. How'd the water taste, Michael? How'd the water taste? You know, it was. I didn't expect my head to go under. I was just yeah. planning on getting my body yeah. under, because this water is pretty nasty. Yeah. So I didn't really get it in my mouth, but it smells kind of bad. Yeah. Fortunately, 34 degree water, less bacteria in it, hopefully, and it should all be settled on the bottom. So guys, that is a idiot's guide to ice fishing and what not to do. So you saw me go in, one inch of ice, very unsafe, but I was able to get out. I was able to get out without using the ice picks. But like I said, your energy will get sapped as soon as you fall in. I mean, I don't know if you ever felt 34 degree water on your entire body but it is absolutely freezing so guys be safe when you're out there be careful but uh if the ice is safe and you love fishing get out there because it's uh it's a ton of fun what do you think about that grandma it's awful it's awful it's I'm, gonna, I'm trying to teach i'm trying dangerous. to teach it is dangerous but i'm okay though see right yeah go to the car, okay, go to the car. Up. so guys two things number one 
the aftermath of what that ice did to me. I didn't even feel at the time because uh, my adrenaline was uh, rushing through me and I was freezing cold, I couldn't feel anything. If you look at my arm right here, look at that. That ice absolutely shredded me up. You can see these scratches all along me. It's actually on my stomach and my thighs too. So getting out of that ice, very hard, very sharp. It uh, did quite a number to me, but you know, it's only a flesh wound. And uh, oh yeah, real quick about my hair. The reason why my hair is so crazy long, I've been growing it out for like four months, is my girlfriend is a pediatric oncology nurse and she won an awesome reward, $1,000 for being the best nurse at Johns Hopkins on the uh, inpatient floor. So to celebrate that, I told her I was gonna grow my hair out super long, that I was gonna get it all shaved off and I was gonna donate it uh, on St. Baldrick's Day so that uh, it can be used as a, as a wig, to make a wig for uh, you know another, another uh, amazing cancer survivor. So that's why my hair is crazy long. But anyways, the second thing I wanna show you guys is I was driving by to visit my mom and my neighbor's house right here just burned down. Um, they're okay, fortunately, but if you guys look, it's absolutely crazy. Let's take a look over here. Here it is, guys. Man, dude, that is crazy. I don't know what happened exactly. If uh, you know, someone maybe left a light on, or left the uh, the burner on, or if there was a heater. I don't know if there's a gas leak. I have no idea what exactly happened. I mean, this just happened probably yesterday because uh, I, I that's what my I I don't even know. I, I don't know when it happened. There's a police line, so I'm not going to cross it. I'll respect the rules. But you guys can see, everything just got burned down. Man, I'm sure they have home insurance, but you know, to go through an or ordeal like this, that is, uh, that is no fun. You can see the roof got charred down. My goodness, look at that. That was one heck of a fire. Whew. My prayers out to their family. That's very, very sad and unfortunate that had to happen. I'm sure I'll get some details later on in the week on how exactly this happened but for now we'll just have to uh hope everything's okay with them and i'm sure everyone in the neighborhood is very kind and friendly everyone will help them out and wow you guys can actually oh my gosh look at that the house next to it actually got their uh siding actually burned down from the heat of the flames that is incredible and that was about 20 or 30 feet from house to house Man, guys, be safe out there. Be safe on the ice. Be safe in the house. Be safe everywhere because you never know when an accident might happen. Actually, my dad almost died right here. He was riding his bicycle down on a uh, wet fall morning. And he actually, his bike, I don't know how it slipped. Uh, it just happened. And he actually hit, slammed his shoulder into here and had to get a crazy expensive uh, surgery with a very long recovery. He shattered his collarbone in like 10 different pieces. So how did his head hit here? He probably wouldn't be here today so and actually i actually had an accident around here too when i was younger but i didn't get very injured so this is uh this corner is unlucky as heck dang i'm never gonna do anything dangerous around this corner again everyone's the accidents over here this is one dangerous ass place it must be freaking cursed